Hello, good afternoon. Um, my name is Jonathan Levy. I am with um, Advocate Consulting Legal Group, which is a law firm in Florida in the United States. We are a very specialized firm. We only work in the aviation community. We represent aircraft owners and operators. There are about a dozen such highly specialized firms in the states. We are the biggest one. We've got about 1,500 clients throughout the country and about 30 people um, working with us. And I would like to share today um, our Triton implementation that has two different parts to it. Um, the way that we got started in Triton was that in uh, doing aircraft law, it's a highly regulated industry that requires a lot of records for the aircraft usage to be collected and then analyzed for um, compliance uh, calculations. And we had developed a series of uh, Excel spreadsheets that had Visual Basic um, built into them that were adequately uh, allowing us to do those calculations until a change in regulations in 2013 created uh, some kind of second layer of facts where you would have to uh, keep track of, well, one entity is owning the plane, another entity is operating the plane, the usage by the operator could impact the owner, and that became very impractical to do in Excel. So we looked for a more robust solution. We initially looked at Django and worked with a firm there that, that didn't work very well. Then we looked to OpenERP, um, and I got a number of the sort of promotional open ERP booklets uh, to try and figure out how to put that together, but that wasn't particularly fruitful. Um, finally, we landed on Triton. Um, Sharon Thomas, uh, who was then at Open Labs, came up with the implementation, and the first thing that we did was a flight log tool that is a web-based application through NERID and AngularJS. And then the second thing that we implemented is a task management system that is roughly based on um, the project module, and I'd sort of like to share both of those with you here. So what we have up now is the web portal. And the way that, the, so what the web portal is for is to allow our clients to give us information about how they're using the plane. And I put in to the demo database here a single plane. It does support multiple planes, but here there's just, just one in place. And uh, the types of things that you need to keep track of are who is using the plane. It, it's very common in the aviation industry that the plane might have one owner, but then might be leased out to five or six different parties because it's a expensive asset and they're trying to maximize the usage of it. So it keeps track of what leases are in place and the relationships between these, the owner entity and the leasing entity will be uh, significant to doing the calculations. Each lessee is able to keep a manifest of the passengers that they have on board and um, important tax characteristics of the relationship of that passenger to the entity. There's an interface for keeping track of the flight logs and for adding flights. Sorry? So the, the law firm is going to prepare um, compliance filings and tax returns with relation to the plane. And so in order to do that, we need all of this data. So this is the, the, the way that they're going to give us the information that's going to allow us to, um, to take care of their compliance. Okay, so you are able to, so what I've done there is I've input a flight and then you can input passengers connected to the flight. So this is the passenger that I just put onto the manifest, or if I need to add a new one to the manifest, I can do it through, through this interface. So this is the client-facing side, um, and it is 
built on AngularJS and Murid. The office-facing side, I, here I have a few windows set up. Um, we can, of course, access the, let's see, access the flight logs that were just entered. So this is the log that I just created. Um, but we also use this for task management. So the way that we relate to our service agreements with clients is through engagements. We might have a client as a party, but then that party will have some number of engagements with us. So for example, we could have a client that owns three planes, but for some reason chooses to engage our services on two of the planes. So that client would have two engagements. They might sell one of the planes, replace it with another one. That becomes a replacement engagement. These engagements are not exactly like projects because they don't have any termination point. Um, it's an annual contract. Hopefully, they'll be with us forever. So we establish that we have the engagement. That's the contractual relationship where we are going to provide some bundle of services to them. And then within the engagement, we created the concept of an engagement item, which is something that we're going to be expecting to do for that client on a recurring basis. So for example, we prepare tax returns for many but not all of our clients. And so here I am um, in, so this is an example of the engagement view. And one of the issues that we've run into in using the task and project module is providing the context for the task. So in other words, you might create a task that says, um, prepare a tax return and assign it to somebody. Well, if you just open that task and all you see is prepare a tax return, you don't have any context to give you a knowledge of, okay, or quick accessibility to who am I preparing this tax return for? What are the details of how we prepare it for them every time? What did we do last time? And so the idea is that the task becomes associated with the engagement item, which reflects the recurring need to do the task for the person. So we have addressed this issue of providing context for the task through a multi-layered sort of view within view, and in some cases view within view within view um, arrangement. So here we have an engagement for a demo client. And we have a variety of different types of engagement items. The engagement item is a mix-in class. It has subclasses that relate to the different types of things we do for people. So here is, uh, here I've selected the sales tax engagement item. So for many of our clients, we prepare sales tax returns, maybe multiple sales tax returns on recurring basis for them. So for example, a client might have three LLCs, three limited liability companies that are, that are relevant to the aircraft structure. And it might be that we need to file a sales tax return on a monthly or quarterly or annual basis for one or more of those LLCs. Well, that would mean that the sales tax, engage, the, the sales tax um, filing is an engagement item associated to that engagement item and associated to the entity the legal entity for which we have to do the filing. So here what we have is a view within a view within a view. So this is the engagement at top, and then the sales tax engagement item, and then the task related to the completion of that needed engagement item activity on that particular occasion. Okay, so. Um, the, so this provides them with the context that they need to be able to understand, to, to fully understand what the task is. Um, and I think I'll, I'll try and give you an example as well of the way that we handled delegation. Um, so here I have four different windows. And one of the issues that we had with the tasks was 
okay, the task, the task is assigned to one person, and they might have something to do on the task, but then they need to hand it off to someone else. Or that person might have an assistant and want to be able to delegate the task out to an assistant. So I have, um, in this example, three windows where we have, that represent three different users. So this is the admin user, and I'm not going to use them. We have the lawyer user, the paralegal user, and the assistant user. And the assistant is a paralegal intern. So the type of things that we would use our engagements to do, so the lawyer, let's say, is opening up the engagement and wants to assign a task to this engagement. Because the way we look at our workflow is that the engagement is the contract with the client, each task has to be associated with an engagement. That's the person that we did the task for. So here we're going to go to a task template and in this case we're going to say, okay, this, this client needs an FAA registration renewal process. So now what it just did is it took me from the engagement tab and created a new task, popped me into this window, and now I can Now what it's done is it has first inherited some information about what you need to uh, that are just generic instructions um, that come from the task template. And then it gives me as the assigner the ability to supplement those instructions with what to do in this particular case. Now it has automatically assigned this task to the paralegal who is on the engagement. So the <coughs> engagements have resources assigned to them, meaning that, all right, the firm has an engagement that says we have to take care of uh, compliance for a particular aircraft for a particular client. Well, that engagement has resources. Typically, we have three resources assigned. We have a lawyer, an accountant, and a paralegal. And whenever the task system generates a task for somebody, it's going to look to the task template and see, well, what role is this task for, right? And so clarify, uh, uh, this particular one was um, renew FAA registration. That is a paralegal task, so it looks to see who is on the paralegal resource for this engagement and then assigns it to that person, right? So that means that this was automatically assigned to the paralegal. The paralegal can look, at, no, that's the assistant. So the paralegal can now look at their current tasks, and this is the one that I just did. Okay, so, and see, okay, I have a current task that was just assigned to me that is um, process the FAA registration. It, this is also, whenever a task is created or delegated or, or um, has its status changed, it's also creating an email notification to that person. Though that's not gonna happen here because there's no crone running. Almost done, okay. So <clears throat> now let's say that the paralegal sees the task but wants to delegate it. So there's a delegatee, a delegatee field and now we're gonna delegate it to the assistant. Save. And now when we refresh, it's going to have disappeared from here. And when I go to the assistant's current tasks, now it appears over here. But now let's say that the assistant, for some reason, isn't able to do the task now. It's not right. It's not time to do the task. And so the assistant can set a tickler saying, you know what? I am not going to be able to address this task until tomorrow. I need to wait for something. The tickler means, so the tickler removes the task from the active tasks and moves it to a sleeping status. Okay, so now there's a crone that's running that every night is going to wake up the sleeping tasks and move them into the active tasks for whatever user. 
Um, so now it's removed from sleeping and it's over here. And now let's say that they want to undelegate it, save it, and it appears back over here. What's that? For the tasks that every day. Every day they wake up. They don't wake up and they assist them again. No, well, they can. Um, so, but they, they, don't, they can sleep it for more than a day. Um, and then there are also rules built in as to the person who was assigned a task only has limited um, powers over the task. They can't delete the task. They can't um, change the due date of the task. They can make it sleep. They can change the status. But the person who assigned the task has the ownership to change those kinds of aspects to it. Um, I, so are we out of time? Ah, unfortunately, we run out of time. How long do you need to, to finish the presentation? What so just give me a time, then I will request the audience and uh, the witness. Five minutes. Is it okay for you that uh, John uh, finished this uh, uh, presentation <laughs> around about five minutes, and after this, ten minutes discussion? Yes. Okay. Good, because this is where I'm going to complain about stuff about Triton. So there's in in the in building this task interface system, there were a few obstacles that we've sort of run into that um, it would be neat to, to find some kind of solution out of. So one of the issues was the delegation field is extremely useful for us, but we had to resort to kind of a hack in order to get it to work. And the reason that that's so is um, so here we have I'll make this bigger so these are my current my current tasks and they have um, active window domains or action window domains I guess they're called that um, are going to govern what shows in what in which field and so for example the domain will say, well, if it's delegated to me and it's in an active status, then it's going to show up in the my active tasks. Well, that domain means that it enforces that it remains delegated to me. Okay, so this is something that wasn't clear to me when I saw the release notes, or it's not mentioned in the release notes for action window domains, that it's not just that it filters which records show in, in which tab, but it restricts in the client what edits you make, right? And so we initially implemented this and tried to, okay, delegate, but, for, but the delegation field would turn read-only because what Triton was thinking well, was, well, if you delegate it, then it shouldn't even be in your domain anymore. And so the hack that we had to resort to was that we have a internal delegatee field and an actual delegatee field. So the internal delegatee field is a function field that is just a proxy for the delegatee field and lazy loading, because of the lazy loading behavior, the client will not retrieve that proxy function field and so it will allow us to make the change, even though the change would move us out of the domain. But it seems to me that, that I mean, I, I don't know if, if the idea is, yeah, just use that pattern if that's not if that's not a hack or if that's a design decision, that's the way to do it. But this is something that I think makes sense that you would want to be able to allow the user to make a change that moves a record out of its action window domain. Um, so that's the first implementation issue that we had. And the second impl implementation issue is I want to get to engagements. So, Okay, so like I said before, we have a view within a view within a view, um, which is extremely useful for us because it gives us the context we need to do the task. It does make things a little bit slow. That's kind of, that, that's on, on us. That's not an, an issue with Triton at all. Um, but one thing that we deal with is, so this top layer is the engagement. The second layer is the engagement item. And this one is the task. And you can see, okay, 
On this record, there's one of one. There's only one sales tax engagement item. And there, there could be multiple. On this sales tax engagement item, there's one of one. There's only one um, task that's open. And generally, it works great. You can edit it. I, everything's fine. But if there were two open, then what would happen is that on save, so if there were two open, you could navigate to the second one, make any changes that you want, interface is perfect, but then on save, it would bounce this back to the first one. And I'm wondering if there's any way to get rid of that behavior, because it's not a big deal, but it's a little bit ugly. Usually, there won't be more than one task open, but it would be nice if there's a way to, to smooth that bit over. What's that? Oh, does it work in, in 4.0? Uh, that's good. Normally, in last version, it should be able to remember which record is the focus and keep it like that on the reload. That's one more reason to move to 4.0. We're on 3.4 now. 3.4. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so then this would be a good stopping point. Any questions? Yeah, uh, so my question is, do you have some kind of reporting? Because you, for a task, how long take a task, task to be done according to the type of task, for example? Or do you have such reporting? Because yes, so, um, so the tasks are generated from task templates, and um, and when they're generated, I, well, I guess it's actually not the task template. When it's generated from an engagement item, what happens is so the engagement item has recurrence rules that will say so. For example, this one is saying it has to be done monthly every one month on the tenth day of the month, but with a lead time of twenty days. And so what that'll do is it'll automatically generate the task with a due date of the 10th day of the month, but it'll generate it 20 days ahead of time. So for the engagement item, automatic generated tasks, that happens. For the um, manually assigned task, you manually assign a due date. And then as to reporting, we have a analytics module that runs um, reports every day of how many tasks have been done, how, each person, how many rights did they do to tasks, who has late tasks. And so, so it's handled both of those ways. The task, ha, task module has due dates, and then the analytics gives us visibility to if anything's sitting and how productive each person is. I have the microphone, no, sorry. Uh, Jonathan, I see you work with Apple. Do you have any issues with the, uh, the Apple client? With the Apple client? So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, so it, I'm the only one in our firm that uses Apple. Um, the the, the pre-built Apple client doesn't work very well for us. I use a, um, I, I run it through a, a shell. Um, so I, I don't use the regular executable. Um, and for some reason, I don't have as much trouble with Uh, how do you deal with uh, employee vacation? Because you assign tasks to employee, but if he's on holiday or sick, how do you know that the task will not be done or whatever? Um, right, so the question is, how do we know it, or how do we deal with the issue of the system's going to automatically assign it to somebody, and what if that person's not there? Um, the tasks that get auto-generated tend to have enough lead time. So like this has a 20-day lead time, and in the States, we don't take vacations that are very long. <laughs> um, and it, that's not something that Triton handles. We're kind of a small firm. We've got 30 people, and so we kind of know, um, and we have analytics to tell us if anything's overdue, um, but the, Triton doesn't specifically handle, we don't have like 
human resources vacation time that we track through covenant. Did you think about, uh, instead of assigning the task in advance, that the user go to a menu and the system select the task for him out of a pool that he can, uh, of tasks he can work on and select one that is not assigned to anybody? And right, okay. So that, um, so I think the, the question is there, how do we handle, or could we, instead of assigning it to one person, have kind of a pool of tasks that anyone can pick from. And yes, we absolutely do that. So the, um, when we have the engagement item tasks, okay, so I just, so the example I gave was process FAA registration rule. That's not an engagement item. That's one that you would only manually assign. But the engagement item tasks might be like, Maybe 200 records exist where they're all going to generate a sales tax task on one day. Okay, right? And so now we have this big list, and we want people to be able to just churn through them. And so we have um, underneath the engagement uh, menu items, we have the engagement item menu items. So the, in workflow, the way it would go is somebody would go to my engagements, which is all of the engagements for which they are a resource and say, click on sales taxes. And now, these are sales tax tasks, but they're not really sales tax tasks. These are engagement items that have an open sales tax task associated with them. So when they open it, it now has context. It doesn't have as much context as if you viewed it as the engagement. It has here, but it, so it's not view within view within view. Now it's just view within view. So this is the engagement item, and then this is the task. Um, and so what you would do is have somebody open this up and then they would see the list of all of the sales tax engagement items with open tasks associated with engagements where they are a resource of any kind, whether or not it's assigned to them. And so this lets people sit down and just churn through, right? And so this is the pool of them. And if we had somebody that was, um, and actually we've just in the last 18 months shifted to actually having these people um, had people that are not going to be a resource on the engagement, but they are sort of tax support, um, then they would just go into, not go, into here. And so the, here it would pull the pool irrespective of whether you're on the engagement. So you would see the pool of all of the sales taxes that need to get filed. Right, so let somebody who's on tax support just sit down and go one after the next and, and go through the pool. Anything else? Uh, how do you support this uh, application uh, as Open Labs does not exist anymore? Um, well, so we still work with Sharon and um, at Fulfill, but um, I do most of the support, um, but it's not changing that rapidly. I have a question. Um, do you need to be like audited by FAA or IRS? Hmm? Do we need to be audited by FAA or IRS in the order of compliance for data? Yes, so um, it, it, we handle FAA and IRS audits as part of our engagement. And so we um, set up the tasks that we need to do on each engagement in preparation for any such audit, right? And so. We're keeping all this, not everybody gets audited, but we have probably 40 audits a year. Um, and now we know that we have the records ahead of time, and so we're able to get through the audits quickly. Any more questions? Nope.